So now that we've got our um, serialized and deserialized functions sorted, what we're going to do now is set up the database connection on MongoDB. And what I've just done here is I've gone to the uh, MongoDB Atlas and in collections right here, what you want to do is just click create a database and then enter a database name in here and a collection name in here. So for this, I've created this advanced node database and a collection called users. And I've also created this local DB right here just uh, for the testing of my own app right here. So now we want to use MongoDB to connect to our database. So to do that, um, just click collections here and actually go back to clusters, sorry. Click on connect uh, when it comes up. Sometimes these things are really slow. Um, I've also, what I've done is in my own project, I've installed a .env and required it, but you don't need to do that because Glitch has already done that for you. So just click connect here, then click connect your application. And um, what you want to do is you want to just copy this uh, URI right here. So it's similar to setting up Mongoose. And what you want to do is uh, down here, you want to say uh, let URI equals and then just paste it in as a string. Um, there we go. And uh, s s uh, you want to fill in your username field, although that should be filled in for you if you created a user. And you want to also put your d database name in here. And remember that for the uh, local project here, I'm just going to use this um, database that I created called local DB. So I'm just going to replace this right here with local DB. And uh, for the password, I put it in an environment variable called pw. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to say plus process.env.pw like this, and then just complete the string right there. So this will be our URI. Now we need to connect among, uh, to the, that database using uh, MongoDB. And we need something called a MongoDB client to do this. So we're going to require that again, and that can also be obtained from the MongoDB package. So I'm going to call it Mongo, like they do in free code camp example. And I'm just going to say require um, MongoDB dot, uh, and then it's called Mongo client. And this Mongo right here can be used to connect your databases. So what we want to do here is we want to say Mongo dot connect. And as a first argument, we want to give our URI that we've uh, filled out right here. So that's the first argument. And the second argument will be a function, is a callback function once this connection is completed. And it will take an error and the database, um, it's kind of a database object, I guess, that we can run database methods on, and that's called db. And what I'm going to do in this callback is say if error, uh, we just want to log the error, so console.log error else. So this is if there wasn't an error, I'm just going to log this DB just to make sure we have it. So if I run uh, server.js now, and hopefully, yeah, we can see that we have this DB object right here. And this has got a bunch of like um, connection retrieval methods and stuff. So we have the database connected successfully. Again, copy the URI, fill in the username, fill in the password, and then fill in the uh, database name right here. It's so similar to the way we did it with um, Mongoose in the MongoDB and Mongoose course. So, so now that we know that we have this database right here, what we want to do is only run a lot of this code if we manage to connect to the database successfully. Because if there's the database connection error, we want to make sure we stop execution because we might accidentally, you know, expose some details in an error message or something. So we want to firstly only start listening on the app once we um, are connected to the database. So the app will only start once we're uh, connected to the database. And we also want to make sure that um, our get root uh, for the for the pug page also gets put into this inside here. So that only starts when, once we've connected to the database. And since these uh, deserialized and serialized functions er, rely on this DB right here, and the DB doesn't get declared until we've connected, we want to also move these as well. So just move those and then paste them into here. Um, I might have to do a bit of tweaking to just push these to the right a little bit. There we go. 
So that should, and then all the only thing we should have outside is our app settings and as well as our um, session right there. So what we've essentially done is connected to the database. And then if there was no errors, um, what we'll do is uh, we'll run or we'll start listening our app and we'll load the pug page and then we'll set up our serialized and deserialized functions. So that's essentially what we have to do for this challenge. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we require the MongoDB client. So right here I'm just gonna say let Mongo and again you have to call it Mongo because these challenges explicitly test each line of your code. So you want to say let Mongo equals require. We want to put MongoDB here and it's Mongo client. Um, I think that's how you say it. Um, I'm just gonna check this double check. Yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna copy it from here because I don't want to risk anything right now. Let's just paste that in there. Um, then you want to generate your URI. So I'm just gonna say let like URI equals. And what I'm gonna do is just copy the URI again from here. So it'll be connect and then connect your application then copy the URI and paste it into here. And uh, we want to make sure that we fill in our password. And again, in Glitch, I've placed a password in a um, environment variable called PW. So I can say process.env.pw. So that will fill in our password. And then we also want to put the database name. And for this, um, I created a new database name. So if I go to collections, uh, have a database name called advanced node here. So this is the database that we want to connect to. So I'm gonna just gonna copy that and replace this database name right here. So that's our URL. Again, it's very similar to the uh, mongoose method. Um, and so that's then we can you know look at this collection users which does exist in here and it shouldn't throw any errors. So then we want to call the method on Mongo called connect and we want to give this URI as the first argument and the function takes in an error and data. And I'm once again I'm just gonna check that um, actually this data should be a database remember. And I'm gonna, instead of using error, I'm gonna use ERR because again, I'm not taking any risks with the way that this gets marked. So I'm just gonna use the exact same variable names. And uh, what we want to do is say if error, uh, I think what we're supposed to do is log the error. Yeah, uh, so I'm just gonna copy this line here and paste it in exactly, being very careful. So else um, what we want to do is just log that we've connected to the database. So we can just copy this and paste it into here. And then remember that we want to make sure that we only start listening after we've connected to the database. So what we want to do is we want to move the app.listen to there. So I'm going to cut that and paste it into here. Um, and I'm just going to click format just to make sure that this gets cleaned up. And then we also want to make sure that we only load our um, pug template once we've connected and we're listening. So I'm going to move that here as well. And I've just made a terrible mistake there. And I've copied nothing basically. So we want to just cut this again and paste it in there and format again. Okay, so... Um, Another thing that we have to do is these serialized and deserialized use, uh, uses and make use of this database right here. And if we don't have a database, they won't work. So we want to make sure that we move those as well. And we move those inside here. And I'm going to format it again. And I think that should be everything we need to do. So I'm going to copy this live app link and I'm going to open the log. And I'm going to make sure that uh, we can load this page without any errors. Um, really hoping this works actually. Okay, the page loads at least. So what I'm gonna do is try submitting it and see what errors come up and then we'll work on those. Uh, database should now be using. Oh, sorry, my bad. I forgot to do one last thing. It says that uh, you have to remove this done null null function right here that we created. So what you wanna just do is just remove that out. Um, they just want us to get rid of it for some reason. So um, let's try that now. No, that should correctly. Um, okay, so sorry, we might have to actually give the doc here. So maybe let's try um, done null doc since we want to return our doc to the request um, 
I'll try that one. It always scares me when it starts taking a long time to do something. Your app is taking a while to stop. Okay. Uh, we just have to be patient here. Um, I'll just explain what this does again while it's we're waiting. So what it does is we have our URI to connect to our database here with the username, the password, and then the database name. And then we've called them, created a Mongo client and called it Mongo. And then we've connected it to the URI. And this gets a callback function once the connection is completed or failed. And it takes in an error and the database object that we can use. And if there was an error, we've logged the error. Otherwise, what we've done is we've started listening on port 3000. We've rendered the pug template. And then we've created our serialized and deserialized uh, user functions. And what we do is we have those ready now. So again, this will uh, create a session, ID, session with the user ID and what this will do is it'll give the it'll find the document for that user and then it'll put that in the request dot uh, user field so that we can use it and as you can see now everything is working um, if you have any errors with this I just recommend that you look at the exact code and just copy it because again it's not about the logic here it's about the way you write it so yeah that should be everything and we're good to go now